Hey there, internet. Here's my prototype electronic lead screw. It's, uh, it's been working well. I'll just do a quick demo if you haven't seen it. You press left, it goes left. You press right, it goes right. Exciting, huh? So while this works, and I can actually do work with it, the, the main problems with this are the setup. This obviously doesn't work, so I have to put this somewhere different out of my way so I can see what I'm doing. There's a whole bunch of exposed metal pins everywhere, and if I get a chip, uh, and a chip happens to land and bridge some of these connections, bad things will happen, uh, including possibly accidentally jogging into the chuck. So this, this really isn't going to work long term, and while it works, and while I can get some work done with it, it's, it's not a long term solution. And I've been putting a lot of thought into what the right controller setup is. And the way I think about the requirements for something like this are, I shouldn't really have to look at the physical controls. I, I, I want something very simple that I don't have to look at, and I can keep my eyes focused on where the, the tool is and what's happening with the work and not have to ex expend any mental energy on the control setup. So that's my goal and I'll take you over to look at a couple of the different things I've been thinking about as well as a prototype that I've set up that I think perhaps solves some of these problems in, a, in an interesting way. The first thing I'll show here is a prototype that I actually made a video on my channel and this is just a mock-up of a ball detent with three positions. So you got your center position, you've got your right position, you've got your left position. And the nice thing about this type of setup is you get a real good positive indication of exactly what position the switch is in. Uh, you get good positive feedback, you know when it's actuated. It doesn't really have a between state. And so this, this gives a nice tactile feedback. So that's one kind of thing. Now the lever doesn't have to be like this. There could be a lever that sticks out more you know, the physical end of the lever, uh, you can do a whole lot of different things with, as well as you can change the number of detents and you can put switches in here to, you know, so that you can send a signal to the controller for the different positions. So that's, that's one kind of, one kind of interface. Uh, this thing, uh, this, this is designed to have a, a, a tungsten, a one kilo tungsten cube that sits up here and there's a there's actually a magnet down here and a sensor underneath and this is set up so that I can control my lighting in my bedroom so I can you know brighten the lights or dim the lights and then I have a switch down here and the way the switch works is I can switch right and it springs back to center and I can switch left and it springs back to center and so I can program different functions in there and the way that this is constructed is is pretty straightforward. It's really just two springs and two micro switches. So when you push it to the right, the right micro switch actuates, and when you push it to the left, the left one actuates. This is the um, the the magnetic encoder sensor. So this is another nice. You get a real nice audible cue, and you can feel it click in, and then it registers in the middle. So this is a nice. You know, you want to jog the lathe left, you can do that. And as soon as you let go, it stops jogging. And if, we, if you want to jog it the other way, you can do that. You can do the same thing here. Jog right, don't do anything, jog left. But what if you could do something that was kind of the best of both worlds, where uh, you could, instead of buttons that have a singular set of functions, or instead of toggles, that have a singular set of functions, you have something in between. So, so I prototype this. This is a gimbal motor with a rotary encoder on the back, and I'm driving it with a LM, an L298 con, uh, motor controller, and that's hooked up to an uh, ESP32. And I've set this up with several different modes. The first mode is what I would call just toggle mode. So. Uh, I, have to, I have to do some PID tuning. Obviously, there's some oscillations in here, but ignore that for a moment. This is a rough draft. 
but this essentially uh, allows you to just toggle between two different modes. Um, so this could be whatever you want it to be, but it, it gives you t uh, a positive lock on two different modes. The next mode here is what I would call spring mode. And this is, this is kind of like the light. When you push it one direction, it'll send a, a, essentially a button press type signal. And if you push it to the other direction, it'll send another type button signal. And assuming that I get the PID controller working, uh, when you set it back to the middle, uh, it won't send any signal. So this is, this is uh, exactly like the light controller mode here. Um, the other one was like a two mode toggle. The next mode is a more interesting mode for the electronic lead screw. So for instance, let's just say that I set a virtual stop and I want to have the lathe carriage move over and take a cut and then stop. And then maybe I do something, maybe I move the cutter in or out or whatever. So what you would do is you tell it to go to that position and it will, uh, the way this is set up is it'll go to the position and wait two seconds and then go back. So this would simulate making a cut. Once it's done the cut, it can go back to a neutral position. And then when you want to send the, when you want to send it back the other way for another pass, uh, you would press it the other direction. So this is kind of like prompting, it's, it's kind of like prompting the user for the end of some sequence. So let's say you're doing, you're doing threading on the lathe. Um, you, you can send a signal back to the actual input that the user can do something that, you know, they can, they can have some awareness of to know that some state has been reached. The final mode is, uh, just another iteration of the same kind of idea. Um, this is a three position switch mode, uh, kind of like the toggle demonstrator that I showed you. And you can create an arbitrary number of detents. So you could have three positions. You could have as many positions as you want as, as, it's, it's as much resolution as you can get and as finely as you can control the, 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 uh, the PID tuner on this, on this gimbal motor here. The final mode that I don't think I really even need to show, but um, because this has a rotary encoder on it, you can, let's say you want to, you want to have a selector knob that allows you to set, for instance, your, uh, your feed per revolution. So uh, you could use the same thing that you engage the, uh, the travel of the, the carriage, uh, you could actually use that same input so that you, uh, can, can maybe you, you maybe you've got a, a mode button, you press the mode button and, and tweak this around, set your, or tweak the feed per revolution that you want to set and let go of that mode button. So this would go back to where, um, like the neutral position so that then you could, um, continue feeding it. So you'd toggle it left at that point and the carriage would go left at the new feed rate. Um, you could also uh, change the amount of torque that gets put onto the controller for something like a rapid mode where you want to, you want to make sure that the user is aware that there's a rapid mode. Maybe it's a little harder to press. It pushes back a little bit more. So there's a whole bunch of interesting, interesting things that you can do uh, combining this kind of this hap this this haptic feedback capability as well as the input capability of this motor attached to the encoder once you have a smart controller there's many things that you can do if your motor that's driving your lead screw on your electronic lead screw can give feedback to the to the entire system as to how much torque it is using to 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 turn the lead screw you can actually translate that torque directly into the torque on this controller. And so for instance, if you wanted to have this set up, like just like on a manual lathe, uh, set this up so that it actually drives the carriage as you rotate it, as the cutter starts to encounter more resistance, you can actually have this motor provide more resistive torque pushing back again, you know, you're pushing this way and it's pushing back the other way. And that gives you a direct connection to the machine that you're controlling via computer, but it gives you the feel of a manual machine. And that's, that's really the ultimate uh, place that you can take this is uh, direct haptic feedback of the motor torque 
acting on the lead screw, which is acting on the work with the tool. And your fingers are pretty good at figuring out exactly what to do um, as the system encounters different kinds of uh, different levels of torque. So that's, that's a very interesting next step. I'm going to focus this on just the input aspect of it. Uh, but one of the things I do want to explore is getting the torque feedback from the motor and then incorporating that into the overall system. So that's the concept that I am working on. If you have any ideas about this, uh, let me know. I'm going to be trying to incorporate this in with the electronic lead screw and uh, we'll do some, eventually we'll do some uh, demonstrations out on the actual lathe itself. So thanks for watching.